our friend Alex. Yeah, hello. And we've got another rip roaring good episode of Falling Through Plot Holes, a show where we talk about legacy video game franchises, their plot lines, and how they have a tendency to go off the rails. And we're here with part two of Mega Man! Woo! Woo! Ah, oh, well, man, I am very, very excited about today's episode, Alex. I am too. Because, oh boy, there is, uh, like, when I, when I talked about how, like, Mega Man X was, like, only the third craziest series, mm-hmm. I, we're, we're about to dive into some of the, some of the best, and by best I mean worst, <laughs> that Mega yeah. Man has to offer. So, when we last let off, let off or uh, got off this uh, wonderful journey on this train, this train to nowhere, we got through the entirety of the Mega Man series, which was nice, light, fun, and happy. Yeah. And then we got into the Mega Man X series where, you know, robot murder started to happen. You know. And, yeah. But, you know, we left off on a good note. You know, Zero unfortunately died in Mega Man X5, which is sad, but a space colony that was going to slam to the earth uh, and destroy everything was that crisis got averted and everything seems like it's going to be on the up and up. Sigma's gone. He's dead. Everything is going to be fine from here on out. Yeah. Uh, so normally I would start with a question to ask you, Alex, but mm-hmm. I uh, I think I would really ask more of a rhetorical question, a question that often is asked by you know, scientists and you know sci-fi writers, and that's the question of, does a robot have a soul? And I'm going to follow that up with another question, and that question is, if a robot does have a soul... Can he use it to make energy? <sighs> All right. Would, would you believe that Mega Man X has an answer for both of those questions? Now, are we talking like spirit energy or like power of city energy? Um, you know, at first it's just power of city energy and then it kind of becomes both. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so we, while we did leave off on Mega Man X5, we're actually not going to move on to Mega Man X6. We're actually going to make an incredibly strange detour to the Game Boy Color and talk about a little game called Mega Man Extreme 2. Now, we're not going to cover Mega Man Extreme or any of the other Game Boy games for the matter because they don't matter. <laughs> They're excuses to fight old, uh, old bosses, and while they generally are good games, they don't really add anything to the story. Except, very annoyingly... Mega Man Extreme 2, a game that takes place between Mega Man X3 and X4. So, hey, Iris is still alive. That's kind of cool. And in fact, she's working with the uh, Maverick Hunters. She's on loan from the Rebel Force and acts as a navigator for X and Zero. And this game centers on a rather silly idea, Alex. You see, every Replit operating system program is called a DNA program. Why? Because... Yeah, no, they want to make them as human as possible, so they based it upon DNA in order to have, like, you know, store their memories and their control programs and whatnot. What? Yeah. Yeah, see, this is a big reason why replicas can be rebuilt or why Exiles can, like, copy their weapons and abilities, because he can copy their DNA. How long after Metal Gear Solid 2 did this game come out? Hmm. This game came out, I believe, in the year 2000. Okay, so this would actually be between Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2. That is okay. correct, yes. Okay, good to, good to know. And slightly before the first live-action X-Men movie. Yeah, just, just a little bit more. Yeah, just a little bit before that. Okay. You know, okay. Not that Mega Man hasn't been influenced by X-Men already. I mean, but... yeah, fair. <laughs> fair. But yeah. So, I am really annoyed by this game, because that is the only fact I really need to share with you. Mm-hmm. And otherwise, this game doesn't matter. But we're, we're going to di- dive just like very, very briefly into it, just because I don't want to leave anybody hanging on this. Okay. Mostly because there's one more incident that sort of happens that does matter. There's a situation that occurs on this random island called Lagoose Island called the Erasure Incident, where Repoid programs are being mysteriously erased and just leaving their shells behind. And it turns out a scientist by the name of Burkana, who's a Repoid, who dresses like a witch, is taking their souls out of the Repoids and using those souls in order to make energy and items so her minions become more powerful. So yeah, not only can you take a soul out of a Reploid, you can make it into energy. So, so Reploids are Highlanders? I, not yet. It's funny you mentioned that. (laughs) Oh god. (laughs) 
I'd say about us uh, eight years after this game comes out, uh, that becomes true. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, there's an awful lot of Highlander in this episode, and I did not expect that. Let me let me get that out of the way. That yeah, boy. <laughs> so I do I do have to say, like one of the core conceits of the gameplay of Mega Man is you beat and you beat bosses and you take their powers. Yes, and that's a really cool gimmick. That's a really fun like game structure design. Mm -hmm. The story that goes into justifying that becomes more nonsensical with every passing game. It really does. It really, really does. And it only gets more and more nonsensical as they find increasingly weird ways in order to let you copy other robots' powers. Yeah. Like, I don't even dislike the idea of, hey, what if other people figured out how to do that too? But... Yeah. I, I don't know. I guess I don't hate that idea yet, but... The mechanics of it sound overly complicated. It really does. And, and Mega Man Extreme 2, it has a problem that I, I sort of highlighted in the first episode where every single Mega Man game matters in some way. They add a little piece here and there. And given that there's like, once again, there's like 64 unique titles, that all of a sudden means that, yeah, like Mega Man Extreme 2 introduces this one random thing just so they could have a shop element to this game. Right. And then it matters in Mega Man X6 and beyond. God. Because somebody decides to go like, oh, okay, no, well, we got to bring that forward. We got to expand upon this idea. And yeah, it's absolutely silly and unnecessary, but they do it anyways. I mean, this is basically a comic book. This is basically a long running comic series. It is. Oh, it is 100% that. Yeah, where they just kind of build on their continuity and they just keep adding and adding and adding until yeah. one day they have to reset everything. But like the content, no part of that continuity was ever planned to be long term. It was a thing that was needed for the story that was being written at the time. Yeah, because it's all just a serial, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's exactly what this is. It's exactly what this is. And then like occasionally you'll have like a cool writer come back and like bring some of the, all this all this stuff forward. And you're like, oh, man, that's cool. They're referencing when you know, Gambit was around and yeah. doing things and he, he could theoretically destroy the world. Now they're writing about that. That's cool. And it's then that writer moves on and the next guy has to be expected to do the same thing. Yeah. And he's like, oh, God, I got to clean this mess up. Yep. Yep. That is that is kind of the Mega Man story in a nutshell. Yep. Okay. So robots have souls. You can take the soul out of the robot and put it in another robot to make them stronger or put it in an item to be an item or something Yes. And that, I assume, is vaguely connected to Mega Man's ability to steal powers. Yes, vaguely. It, right. It's it's a lot of fun because, like, X has absolutely no, like, like moral worry about this at all. Like, he, <laughs> he gladly uses DNA souls throughout the game. It's great. great. <laughs> oh, by the way, they're called DNA souls because Iris says, oh, man, the DNA is kind of like the soul of a Reploid. That's, it's not. Let's call them DNA souls. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Why would you make your robot like that? Why would you, huh? It's almost like humanity has no plan for anything, and they just keep barreling forward in the dumbest way possible. We want to make them more... We want to make them exactly like humans, except they're immortal and stronger than us and smarter than us. And also, we want to treat them like slaves. Yeah, exactly. Oh, boy. This will work out. Yeah. This <laughs> definitely won't lead to genocide. Nope, definitely won't. So there really isn't much more to say about this game other than it acts as an excuse to fight old Mavericks from Mega Man X1 through X3. Sure. Uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, it turns out Sigma was behind everything. He has stopped. Oh my. Oh the my end. Gosh. Yeah, it's, it's very, very dumb. So that leads us back into the Mega Man series proper. Or Mega Man X series proper, I should say. So uh, with the end of Mega Man X5 and the looming release of Mega Man Zero, it seems like the X-Series was over and done with. Inafuni wanted X-5 to be the final one there, and he was willing to move on from that. However, this is Capcom we're talking about, and there's no reason to let a good franchise go to waste if they can avoid it. So shortly after the release of Mega Man X-5, they greenlit development of Mega Man X-6. Now, this was despite Inafuni's intention to end the series. And he himself seems to be very much against the idea of another X game. 
And he felt like yeah. he had to apologize to fans for his creation. Wait, was X6 his creation? No, he is actually not going to be a producer on the series going forward. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, from X6 on, he is not. he does not have a producer credit. This is one of Capcom's worst tendencies. Yeah. Like, they already made multiple series in the Mega Man franchise. Just make a new... You're making a new one right now. Yeah. Yeah, they were literally, at this point, working on their fourth Mega Man series. Why make another X? Oh, because the last one sold 700,000 copies, and they were like, wow, that's kind of a shock. Let's make another. Just make why? Because they're cheap to make, and people want to buy them. Mm. Gotta make that money, man. Rampant capitalism. We gotta do this. <laughs> so, Inafuni, once again, was really against this. Like, right. he stated in the Rockman X official complete works, he quoted that, I had honestly planned for X5 to be the last title in the series, but I somehow I found myself with X6. I feel like it owed the fans an apology, but I have to admit the series was starting to go in a direction that was out of my control. I plan to re-examine the situation and be more careful with how I handle the Mega Man name from now on. <laughs> this was from 2009, by the way. Mm. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's some context. Oh, isn't it, though? Yeah, because one year later, he would be gone from the company. <laughs> so this is a hell of a quote, because once again, Inafuni was still with the company. And as general, uh, when you're part of Japanese corporate culture, you don't criticize the company you work for in this manner. Right, right. And well, obviously, when we get to the end of all this, we're going to talk a little bit more about kind of how he kind of ran his mouth a little. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we'll leave that for the end, because regardless, Inafune didn't have a choice. And as such, he would have very little to do with the X series going forward. And honestly, it has quite a different tone to it overall, like X6 through X8. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, I think as far as the story goes, it has a better tone to it. All right, that's fair. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit about the story of Mega Man X6. So here's the probably the first thing that I actually don't really like about this. Mega Man X6 takes place three weeks or so after the events of X5. Now, to remind people what happened in X5, you know, the colony Eurasia was going to crash into the world. And if it, if it crashed, it was going to basically probably wipe out the entirety of humanity. And then, the you know, the Maverick Hunter stopped it. And it's great. Everything is fine. Okay, I have to say real quick, I feel like the entirety of Mega Man X has taken place over the course of, like, a year or less so far. It really does feel like that, doesn't it? Yeah, they're very, very funky about the time frames that everything is happening in, but it does really feel like that. It feels like every game is a month or less apart. Yeah. Yeah, because I think Mega Man X2 takes place six months afterwards, um... X3, I think it's like a year after that? Something like yeah. that? Yeah, so it's it almost feels like all this is happening within a decade at best. Yeah. So, while the good ending was that X5, you know, the colony has stopped, X6 seems to split the difference between the good and bad endings. So in, X, so in X6, the colony doesn't fully impact, but it still causes widespread environmental damage, and humanity now has to live underground. So... Yay! Yay! <laughs> we did it! <laughs> so the red plates are up on the surface, they're cleaning it up, and uh, we meet our first, uh, first, uh, first new reploid. His name's Gate. He's a reploid researcher, and he's investigating the impact site of Eurasia, and he's remarking about how, like, the Maverick Hunters might as well have failed. Like, boy, you all did a real terrible job, which, that's kind of just sums up the Maverick Hunters in a nutshell, yeah, really. Yeah, fair, fair. <laughs> So he's like walking around Eurasia and he finds an odd control chip on the ground. He picks it up and he realizes what it is. It's the DNA program for Zero. Okay. So Gate is excited about this because his entire life's work has been centered around decoding the DNA programs of X and Zero. Both of which were basically, they were like in, uninterpretable to the, even the best researcher. Like they just did not understand what was their deal at all. <sighs> okay. The morality of that is so wildly unclear. Yeah. Like, if you were 
a geneticist and you told me that your life's work was decoding the soul of this one person, hmm. I'd be like, what? <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to deal with that. Yeah, right? <laughs> Why? We got, we got to know about the DNA of this person. The DNA is going to tell us everything. But their DNA is their soul, though. Yeah. It's like how you, like, once in a while hear about a scientist who's trying to prove that people have souls and whatnot. And they're, like, like, weighing bodies right after they die and be like, oh, they lost, like, six grams. Look at that. That means the soul left. Like, it's yeah. bas- that's basically what Gate is kind of doing here, except I guess technically he can actually prove this because the, you know, X and Zero were built, but still. Right. But but this can only end in cloning, right? Oh, huh, funny you, you say that. <laughs> like there's nowhere else this goes. Yeah. Yeah, basically. <laughs> you, you, may have, you may have tugged at a plot line of a later series almost. Mm. Yeah, X6 is another game where it's like there was like one or two little things that if those weren't in here, we wouldn't have to talk about this game, and that happens to be one of them. Fair. <laughs> so, Gate gets to work alongside another replate whose name is uh, Isoc. So, uh, he basically looks like a very old replate with, like, I don't know, a weird can cylinder for hair? And a can cylinder beard? He's a very weird-looking replate. Like, both weird and not. Go ahead. Is Inafune working on this game? No. He is, okay. not, he is not working on this game. Uh, his absence is being felt a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little. So, Gate gets to work alongside uh, Isoc and whatnot, and Isoc is kind of interesting because he seems to know Zero from the inside out, and he actually manages to decode Zero's DNA up to 99%. So, there's a slight downside to working on Zero's DNA, though. The, the Sigma virus is in there. Oh, right. So Gate gets infected and he goes insane. Cool. Not ISOC, though, but Gate does. Okay, so the Sigma virus is a soul virus now. It kind of, yeah. I think it kind of has been for a while now. Well, uh, I guess since okay. X5. But, okay, but you, you can contract the virus by working with, you know what? I don't... Let's move on. Yeah, you know, he, he it's you know, he kind of he kind of touched the the control chip, he put it up to his mouth, and now all of a sudden he has a sigma virus. It's like getting it's like getting a norovirus or something like that. Every mechanic of robotics at play in the story is now so incomprehensibly un- abstract. I can't I don't know if they know what a virus or a soul or DNA is. They really don't, and I, I think it's just because they want to write the replays as being as human as possible, and they don't want to actually involve humans in the story. Right, but that's also not how humans work. I mean... I think... No, I mean, that's kind of, like, that's kind of sort of how, like, viruses work with humans, in a way, but... I mean, they don't infect our souls, obviously, right. but... They also I, generally don't live in DNA... True, and I guess they don't, like, manifest themselves as Mr. Clean robots or Mr. Clean also, humans that try to murder that. us all. Although, also boy, that. that would make life a lot more interesting. And terrifying. Yeah. Oh, boy. I'm both into and not into this future. So, do we happen to know, though, there's a new type of virus that's shown up. Okay. It's called the Nightmare Virus. Why? Excellent question. So it can affect the programming and even alter the physical appearance of replays that it infects. Okay, so, that sounds like the Sigma virus. Yeah, but like it literally like makes them look different. Okay, fair. Yeah. Uh, so this appears to be led by a purplish nightmare virus that looks like Zero called the Zero Nightmare. <sighs> Go on. <laughs> You sound already so done with this. <laughs> and yes. I and I don't blame you. Nobody likes X6 for a lot of reasons. <laughs> it's probably the most 2000s thing they could have come up with. It really probably is. 
So the entire population of replicants on the surface are frightened about this new aggressive virus. So ISOC decides to take advantage of this by rallying the replicants together to fight the Zero Nightmare and unite under Gate. Since he's like, humans and Maverick Hunters can't protect us. Like, look what the Maverick Hunters did. The entire world's basically destroyed. Right. So they all rally underneath him. And X is like dispatched to the Eurasia crash site to deal with the nightmares. And that's when he encounters the Zero Nightmare and also runs into a new replicant working with Gate called Hymax, who's dumb. Oh, God. Yeah, uh, so Hymax, for those of you at home, is a, like, all-black reploid with, like, a very stern look on his face and, uh, like, almost like a tuning fork for a head, in a way. He looks like an anime transformer who can't transform. Yeah, yeah, or, like, somebody decided to, like, redo Galacticus, but it's Dark Galacticus. Yeah, one or the yeah. other. So, you know, X, like, um tries to fight high max and high max just like washes him and like he he tells x that he's the lead investigator into the nightmare phenomenon and he's like hey back off and let me handle it otherwise i'm gonna mess you up so the nightmare investigators are a group of replays that are underneath gate and they are tasked with finding and defeating the zero nightmare so x like encounters the zero nightmare and he can't let this slide because it appears that like his best friend is now a virus and like even if he isn't, like, Gate is like, man, Zero really sucks. Zero's awful. And X is like, he's my best friend. You are not going to talk to him like that. I am going to fight y'all. So he goes off to deal with the eight investigators and see what their deal is. Because, of course, there's eight. Wait. So the robot masters of this game are the people who are allegedly trying to stop the virus? Yes. I see. Hey, the thing is, though, it's like they're like bounty hunters getting away in the getting in the way of the cops and the cops are like we can't let you do that so we got to beat you over the head Mm -hmm. because what can i say x is a cop but sure so might as well yeah might as well be so you'll be you'll be happy to know that these eight uh these eight mavericks or well i guess they're technically not mavericks yet uh these include a dung beetle who rolls around big balls of robot junk a, sure. water f- a water flea who can replicate himself seemingly endlessly. And Metal Shark Player, who either has the best or worst name in the series. I go with best. That's fair. So as X battles through the investigators, two things are revealed to him. First, a lot of the investigators are extremely devoted to Gate. And many of them have actually been revived. Like they were destroyed previously, but they've mm-hmm. revived through one means or another previously. The second is whom we learn a lot of this information from. And this is the one thing about this game story I actually really like. Alia. So if you remember Alia, she was the navigator from Mega Man X5. A blonde reploid who basically just told X about, like, oh man, watch out for this pit. Okay. They, sure. ac- they actually give her a backstory and have her be pretty majorly involved in this story. Which is, also means this is the first time there's a reoccurring character in the Mega Man X series that isn't X or Zero that drives the plot forward. Or really, Mega Man in general, now that I think about it. Mm. So it's like, oh, wow, no, this is, yeah, fantastic. Alia, go you. You're, you're relevant. Yeah. So Alia wasn't always a Maverick Hunter. She originally was also a Replay researcher who worked with Gate on analyzing Replay DNA. So... Gate back then was also obsessed with developing similar replicas to X and Zero. Uh, he felt that they had like unmatched power, and it would be a great benefit if somebody else could like make a replay just like them. So at some point, he apparently did this with a team of researchers. Like he made like a prototype, mm-hmm. but this led to like a lot of jealousy from his colleagues, and they decided they couldn't allow this to stand. Now, part of this is because they felt this was dangerous and were jealous of Gate's success. The other part was because Gate is a dick. Ah. He, he always had a sarcastic personality and a large ego, and he just happened to rub literally everybody other than Alia the wrong way. He also, like, made a bunch... And, like, one of the reasons why people hate him is, like, a lot of the replays he made, he, like, encoded in and encrypted them so they couldn't be analyzed, <laughs> so he could retain control over them. And so everyone else is like, you, you, you're supposed to be sharing this information Okay, we need to get rid of this guy. So right. they set up a situation where many of Gates' researchers were either declared a maverick, destroyed, or both. 
and many of these being the now nightmare investigators X is fighting. So Alia went along with these plans, albeit reluctantly, and like has a great amount of regret about this, and eventually Gain himself was just ostracized from a research group. He then met Isoc at some point, and now we have a video game. Okay, so, wait, Gate is a reploid, right? Correct. And he was making other reploids. Also correct. And then his colleagues were eventually like, yeah, we get, we just gotta, we gotta get rid of these and just kill those reploids, basically. Yeah, they would set up situations where they would be, like, framed as mavericks or, like, go into intentionally dangerous situations and get destroyed. Yeah. I see. <laughs> yeah, basically a lot of murder happened. So what is the argument for humanity not to just get wiped out in this series? I mean, it really makes you wonder what exactly humanity's deal is, because, yeah, they're doing literally nothing. Has humanity done one redeeming thing in this entire franchise? In Mega Other Man than X? Dr. Light? Yeah. Uh, no, they have not. Like, if you go back to Mega Man, you know, you have Dr. Cossack who's doing good things. And there's other, like, yeah. robot scientists that get referenced. But yeah, once you hit the X-Series, you just... You have Dr. Kane doing his thing, and yeah. that's bad. And then you just... You don't need any other humans. Like, the one failing of the Mega Man X-Series is that you meet exactly one human. Yeah. And then the rest are just off screen, just being like, boy, sure hope my Replate slave doesn't murder me today. Guess I'll live underground now. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's awful. So, X continues to battle the Nightmare Investigators and eventually comes face to face with the Zero Nightmare. He manages to defeat it, and wouldn't you know it, right after this, Zero shows back up, fully repaired and ready to fight. Wow. If it sounds like an awkward transition, it is. He literally <laughs> just shows back up. No one is really sure who repaired him. Like, Dr. Light's hologram, who's still sentient. <laughs> he won't be after this game, but he is right now. He's not sure himself, but Zero's back, and X is like, man, I got my best friend back. This is great. So they infiltrate Gates Lab, and they fight through various traps, and they, uh, they beat up Hymax, uh... And they actually encounter Isoc, and they discover the truth behind a nightmare virus. Would you like to guess who created a nightmare virus? Well, it was either Sigma or Dr. Wily. Oh, you know, actually, no, it was Gate. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, those are good guesses. <laughs> you, you were fair to guess those. Yeah, fair. <laughs> but yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, he intentionally created it for two purposes. To cause fear that he would then control and bring the Reploids under his wing, so su succeeded with that. Mm. And then he would use the Nightmare to eliminate weak, low-level re Reploids and strengthen the Reploid race as a whole. He's basically really into Reploid eugenics now. What? Yeah! <laughs> since, he's like, since when? Um, Since, I guess, when he went crazy and started making really strong Reploids. Wait, was he researching X and Zero's DNA because he's like, these two are the master race of robots? Yeah, actually. Yeah, he literally was researching them because like, if we can make copies of these robots, we could have something that's, we could have really strong robots that could benefit everybody. We can just get rid of all the other ones at that point. Pretty much, yeah. When he gets the Sigma virus, he's like, and now I can murder the rest of them. Oh. Yeah. So like, Humanity and Reploids are both terrible. Yeah, kinda. Hmm. Yeah. It turns out Reploids are starting to become more and more human every day. Wow. Yay. So, all of this was created from Zero's DNA, by the way. The nightmares mm. and whatnot. Sure. Uh, X and Zero defeat Gate. And uh, Gate reveals, though, he has one last trump card. Uh, he, he's revived Sigma. Oh, sure. Why not? Yeah. At, at, the, at least this time, it wasn't Sigma, like... He doesn't, like, create a situation where he gets revived. It's just somebody else is like, I should do that. Yeah. I, you could probably make the argument that being under the influence of Sigma virus probably causes people to be like, maybe I should make a body for Sigma. So it could be a little bit of both, but... Yeah, it could be. Wait, what happened to Isoc? Oh, we're going to get to him in a sec. Okay. So the Sigma that was rebuilt, though, is a little incomplete. 
And apparently the constant dying and coming back has caused his programming to become heavily damaged. So he's like incomprehensible and a shambling mess. Mm. Like even when he speaks like X and Zero, it's like very halting and full of like errors and whatnot. But like he's revived, he immediately attacks Gate. And he sure. like tries to defeat X and Zero, but he's just unable to. So like Gate's basically disabled from this. Uh, X and Zero go to like arrest Isoc, but they find he's just an empty shell, and they're like, "Oh man, it's just like the Erasure incident." All right. Yeah, like his soul is gone. But then Zero hears a voice telling him he's his greatest creation when he sees Isoc's empty shell, because the implication is that's Doctor Wily. The Isoc is Doctor Wily. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sure. <laughs> They keep going back to that well for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> uh. So X rescues a now disabled Gate, and he brings him to Alia, who promises to repair him and make things right. We will never see Gate again. <laughs> <laughs> and we get another ending after this, where at some point in the future, we see Zero being willingly sealed in the caps in a capsule with the purpose of removing a dangerous part from him. Presumably, this is the component that causes the Sigma virus, but it's never truly confirmed. And that's Mega Man X6. All right. So yeah, I, I I like the fact that they actually have other characters driving the plot forward in Mega Man mm. X6. There's just a lot of nonsense that's all around it. Yeah. But you know all what right. game? You know what game has uh, has like surprisingly less nonsense, but a new annoying third main character. Is it X7? It is Mega Man X7. Boy, are we going to talk about Axel now? Oh, we're going to talk about Axel. Oh, we got to talk about everyone's favorite boy. <laughs> so, Mega Man X7 is a weird game released for the PlayStation 2. We're not going to get too much into the development of it, but it has maybe one of the dumbest plot points I've ever seen in a game, and also maybe some of the worst Mavericks. I cannot wait to talk to you about the Mavericks in this oh. game. Oh, I know some of them. <laughs> oh, I bet you do. But yeah, by the beginning of Mega Man X7, the world's slowly being rebuilt and humanity has moved back to the surface. However, the never-ending Maverick Wars have taken its toll on X, who at this point is quite tired of killing his brothers. As such, he's retired. He works with like the Hunters as more of a consultant, and instead is focusing his energy on more peaceful solutions. This is really dumb because you figured he's kind of used to the whole Maverick virus thing causing mm -hmm. replicas to go crazy. And you figured he'd be like, oh, yeah, I can't really reason with those. And he, he doesn't really talk about him like trying to find like cures for it or anything like that. He's just like, if we talk more, there won't be Mavericks and it'll be great. You will find that this doesn't work and it leads to a rise of Maverick attacks. Yeah. This, uh, this all feels this all feels really Gundam Seed Destiny. It kind of oh, you mean X is like our perfect boy Kira? Maybe a little bit. <laughs> I don't want to fight anymore. I'm just gonna sit in this log cabin with the children and stare off at the horizon for a while. Maybe he's gonna show up halfway through the series and take over and be stronger than everybody. Maybe could happen. I wonder what's going to happen when I read these next few paragraphs. So, <laughs> in X's absence, a new vigilante group called Red Alert is formed to hunt down Mavericks wherever they are. While consisting of another number of Replates, it's led by a Replate named Red, hence the Red Alert. And there's there's a good old photo of him. He's silly oh looking. Uh, he has like a Thunderbolt scar that maybe is intentionally built into him. A uh, weird yellow hair that slicked back and uh, looks very, very serious, very, very spiky, too. And his top agent is a mysterious Reploid named Axel, spelled A-X-L. Get a photo up there. I, I know you know what he looks like, but yeah. Ax Axel is a very serious looking Reploid um, with like wearing like nice dark blue, like with, like dark blue pauldrons, has like yellow spiky hair, orange spiky hair. And he has a gun. He has an actual just God honest gun. Yep. He looks very extreme, and he looks like a guy who'd be very, very serious, except he's not. He's kind of like the comic relief slash naive uh, character in this game. He's, mm -hmm. His personality does not match his look at all. It's fantastic. So Axel's a new generation Reploid. 
It's unknown who built him, but he possesses a chip that allows him to perform something called an A-trans. A-trans allows Axel to absorb the DNA of another Replate and take its form. Provides a similar size and structure to Axel. Replates can now transform. They can now Animorphs. Cool. <laughs> Wait, no one knows who built him? No, nobody knows who built him. He just showed up one day. <laughs> but they're like, hey, get on the Maverick Hunter team. Yeah, You're second in command now. Yeah, they're like, hey, why don't you join our, our Maverick Hunting mercenary group? No follow-up questions will be asked. It's absolutely unnecessary. <laughs> All right, sure. So, Red Alert's activities, while reckless, are effective. However, after a mission where Axel infiltrates a meeting between two criminal Mavericks, who are ins insanely stereotypically criminal, mm -hmm. uh, they apparently stole a virus program called the Sigma-02, uh, which is not going to actually be relevant for the rest of this game, by the way. You, you okay, figured sure. it would be, but it wouldn't. Uh, Red Alert comes under the notice of the Professor. The Professor seems to know a lot about Axel's copying abilities and convinces Red they can use that to power up Red Alert as a whole. So Red's a little skeptical, but the Professor like does a proof of concept, and then he's like, after that, he's completely on board. The problem, though, is that Red and Red Alert as a whole become much more reckless, and innocent replicates start to get caught up in the activities. So Axel decides he's had enough one day, and he turns himself into the Maverick Hunters. He, he's pursued by Red Alert, but then Zero manages to like intercept their forces and save Axel, and then immediately arrests Axel because he's an illegal mercenary. Sure. <laughs> so Axel's kind of cool with this because he gets to meet his heroes X and Zero, but then he's immediately berated by X for everything Red Alert's done. He's like, you're just fighting and killing people, and that's just wrong. What's, what are you doing? You're doing everything the wrong way. X sucks in this game. <laughs> like, Zero and Cygnus tell, like, and others, like, tell him to calm down. It's like, mm. chill out, X. And, like, right as he does, Red contacts the Hunters and demands Axel back. Which they're like, we're the government. No. <laughs> <laughs> so then Red proposes a competition to determine who gets Axel. What? Yeah, the conceit of this game is kind of dumb. They'll see who can hunt the most Mavericks. And whoever hunts the most Mavericks gets Axel. The hunters don't want to do this. They think this is dumb. But they realize that they let Red Alert run rampant. They'll cause a ton of damage. So Zero's like, all right, I'll go. Axel wants to go along because he wants to make up for his past actions, and X is strongly against this. To which Zero points out that, hey, if you're not going to fight, we need all the help we can get, so shut up. <laughs> so X is like, all right, fine. So Zero and Axel take off to fight the Mavericks, and these include a very vocal flame hyena, a boxing kangaroo, and my favorite, an onion with wind powers called Tornado Tunyon, God. <laughs> it's so awful. <laughs> he is the absolute worst. What's the fire guy called again? Heat? Flame Heinyard. Flame Heinyard, okay. Yeah, he's the one who's infamous for, like, his um, voice Certain lines voice are bugged. Lines. Yes. Yeah. He says burn to the ground an awful lot. Like, literally yeah. one second after another. So... Like, Zero and Axel are destroying the Mavericks. The destruction becomes more and more widespread. And eventually, X is like, all right, I guess I'll fight too. And joins Zero and Axel in fighting the Mavericks. Uh, X is an absolute beast in this game, by the way. When you do unlock him, turns out he's, right. he's still real good at fighting. Yep. Why isn't X going after Red Alert while this is happening? Um. Well, because, you know, he, he, he doesn't want to fight. He wants a peaceful solution to everything. Which okay, he does but... not propose or tr even try in the slightest. But then he also fights the Mavericks eventually. Yeah, eventually he's like, all right, I guess I'll fight them. Now, he doesn't take... Part of the reason why they don't take the fight to Red Alert is because they don't know where they actually are. Isn't Red Alert out fighting Mavericks as part of this competition that's nonsense? Oh, well, I guess there is that, but eh, you know. <laughs> They're very fast. <laughs> <laughs> they should be trackable at this point. Well, as we already know about the Maverick Hunters, they're bad at their job. So after after the replicants are or the Mavericks are defeated, Red informs the hunters that he's located in the Crimson Palace and gives them the location. 
So as they travel there, though, it turns out Red has realized the professor's true nature. He was just using him to get access to Axel and give him a way to defeat X and Zero. Because this person is Sigma. Wow. So he's like, oh, crap, it's Sigma. Uh, yeah, I messed up. But he's powerless to stop him at this point. So Axel ends up confronting Red and they fight. With, and like, Axel defeats Red. And Red's like feeling really bad about this. He's like, man, I'm sorry, Axel. Yeah, we bad things have happened. I'm going to now self-destruct what? out of shame. And sorry things got too far. Just blows himself up. What does that help? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a pointless sacrifice. It's great. Do the writers of this game know how guilt works? I mean, probably. A little bit? Like, you know, Axel felt guilt, and he's like, I'm going to make up for it. Whereas Red selfish, and he's like, I don't want to face the world. Sure. X so, is like, I feel so bad about all the violence. I will now go away. Yeah, pretty much. I'll just still hang out in Maverick Hunter Base and just, I don't know, yell at people for having guns. <laughs> I think that's what I'll do all day. That's That's my life now. Sigma's defeated after this, and Axel proves his worth, and while X is still reluctant to include him as part of the Hunters, he ultimately allows him to join. And that's Mega Man X7. So, X7 is important because it introduces Axel and the A-Trans. If that wasn't present, we would not have to talk about this game at all. This, it should have been Axel and X as the main characters in this game. Yeah, Zero should not be here. He should be sealed up as a capsule and just, just these two. Or even just hanging out in the background or be the unlockable character. Like, this would work way better if X was like, you're dangerous and reckless, so I'm going to go with you mm. and be your leash and teach you how to do this properly. Like, I'm going to be the counterbalance to you. Yeah, I'm going to be the good cop to your bad cop instead of Zero's morally gray cop to your bad cop. Right. Yeah, that, that could have worked really well. Yeah, also it's ridiculous that X is the one to retire when Zero's been doing this longer, I think. Yeah, by like, like a couple months or something like that. It, it might as well be the same amount of time. Like, it makes X sound like the veteran of the group when in X1, Zero was like the cool big brother mm -hmm. character. Yeah, I, I think this all comes back to the whole suffering circuit thing. Like, that was just a mistake. I forgot about the suffering circuit. Uh, if it makes you feel better, so did Capcom. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> Just like Mega Man X8. Oh, no. Actually, X8's an okay game when it doesn't have weird gimmick stages. Like, there's five mm. good stages in it, and then there's three that are like you're in a ride chase or something like that. But So, Mega Man X8. So, due to the continuing destruction of the Maverick Wars... Humanity has decided the only on the only plausible course of action. They're going to move to the moon. Humanity initiates what's called the Jacob Project, which are a series of orbital elevators to transport humans as well as materials to the moon. Since the construction and maintenance of an orbital elevator in lunar colonies require a varied and adaptable workforce, the humans decide to mass produce the new generation reploids based on Axel. Okay, so there are quite a few terrible ideas already <laughs> there's a lot of terrible ideas already at play oh, i'm you're... not even gonna bother to work through them all that's probably good because there's gonna be one more terrible idea you're you are not gonna even even think of oh good so if they do this because after all if you have two, you don't need two reploids for two separate tasks if you can just have one that can transform right so the project was going well when one day an elevator breaks off from the tower and crashes into the earth. So X is on patrol and he goes to see if there are any survivors when the doors open and they reveal an army of sigmas. What? Suddenly they transform into standard reploids and a purple haired reploid by the name of Lumine shows up. Basically to tell X everything is fine and they only transformed into the sigma so they could survive the accident. What? So, let me explain what the humans... By the way, this is what Lumine looks like. He's, uh, he doesn't look like a villain at all, is what I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah, and, not really. 
and you know he has like he has like fan shaped purple hair and he like looks very very young has a weird crystal in the center of his body so humanity or the replates who make the new generation replates i i'm not really sure but humanity doesn't do anything in this game so it's probably a replate probably yeah so they have to like preload the programs into them like who they can transform into somebody decided to put sigma in there sure yeah okay so by being able to transform their dna that makes them immune to the sigma virus what it is never explained how but this is just treated as gospel okay sure it's gonna make things that happen in Mega Man zero make it zero sense but <laughs> supposedly this is how it works Reploids are now immune so okay so like X is very disturbed by this, but Lumine is like, hey, listen, I'm the director of the Jacob Project, and don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. We can't be infected by the Sigma virus. Transforming the Sigma is perfectly safe. So okay. the fact that he's the director of, of the Jacob Project proves to be very detrimental to his continued existence, because one day, Vile, remember Vile? Remember that Boba Fett-looking guy from Mega Man X1 and technically Mega Man X3, but we didn't mention it at the time? Sure. He's back. All right, sure. Might as well be. Yeah, and he kidnaps Lumine. And Maverick Uprising suddenly had began all over the world, particularly among some of the new generation Reploids. Okay. <laughs> so, needless to say, X, Axel, and Zero take off to put down these rebellions, and they're led by eight Mavericks. And, oh boy. <laughs> these include a fiery rooster, Gigavolt Manowar, who maybe has the worst stage in the series, and perhaps my favorite, my favorite Maverick, a nihilistic panda by the name of Bamboo Pandemonium. <laughs> oh, God. All right, sure. <laughs> Alex, would you like to hear some uh, choice lines from Bamboo Pandemonium? I very much would. All right, I'm going to do this in my best uh, Bamboo Pandemonium voice. So he says this one, I believe, to ask... Do you know that the earliest form of rocketry were missiles used for war? What wishes for the destruction is this world? We're just helping it along and giving it what it wants. Wow. Yeah, and lines like that. It's, oh God, it's great. He is so stupid. Oh, his stage is actually really nice, though. I really like his stage an awful lot. But <laughs> So the team beats up the Mavericks, and we find out this is all orchestrated by Sigma. He's back. Big, big shock by this. He, he also looks actually really cool in this game. I'm going to break a picture. Copy Sigma looks just like Sigma, as you would imagine. Right. A evil demon dark Sigma is like an all black, like monstrosity with like weird minotaur horns and like a fire eye and, and a weird orb in the center of his chest that's broken apart. Like he kind of looks rad. A little bit, yeah. So... You know, this is all orchestrated by Sigma, and his plan is to eliminate all the old Replates and replace them with the new generation Replates because they're his children, because they contain his DNA. <laughs> Since he's, yeah, and that's that's true because they're able to transform into him. In order to transform into another Replate, you have to have their DNA. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So sure. They go up to the moon. They fight him on his cool moon fort and moon throne, and he is disabled. So after he's disabled, like, Lumine emerges right after this, and X is like, oh, man, hey, Lumine, it's good to see you, buddy. You okay? And Lumine's like, am I okay? <laughs> Walks over, crushes Sigma's head, and reveals to the hunters that he wasn't being held captive. Rather, he was using Sigma as a scapegoat. So it turns out the plan to eliminate the old replays and the humans also, he, he also wanted to murder the humans, sure. uh, was his plan all along. Because... Lumine explains, says he contains a bit of Sigma in him. He now has a new perspective on human reploid relations. Specifically, okay. that he can rebel of his own free will. Which, I feel like they should have always been able to do this. And I feel like there's examples of that. But okay. Yeah, sure. So, he says that by rebelling, he's rebelling of his own free will rather than because of a virus or malfunction. And he also reveals sort of offhandedly that Sigma's not coming back anymore. Sigma's gone. He's dead. Okay. 
I mean, I guess if all the reploids are immune to the Sigma virus, then sure. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and he's stuck on the moon now. It's it's fine. <laughs> so he decides that he's going to fight, you know, X, Axel, and Zero because, you know, they're inferior reploids and blah, blah, blah. But unfortunately uh, for Lumine, he decides to fight a three-on-one battle that includes two mechanically incomprehensible murder machines and is defeated. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like that part wasn't very well planned out. <laughs> He's like, I am so superior to you, I'm going to defeat you. Oh no, you're all shooting me. <laughs> you all have guns and I don't. <laughs> yeah, isn't he a research reploid? He is, but like, he transforms into like a big machine and whatnot. Okay. As, is, as is Mega Man tradition at this point. Sure. So... As the team slowly descends down Jacob's ladder, Zero ponders if this means he doesn't ha he won't have to fight anymore. Poor buddy. Poor, poor delusional Zero. <laughs> uh, so, a final bit of information is revealed after this incident. Uh, all new generation reploids with the DNA chips are, like, cease production, because they're like, this is actually a bad idea having Sigma in them, turns out. But, unfortunately, after a few years, production has started back up as the demand for reploids who can work in space increases, despite protests from other humans afraid of what might happen. Okay, so I'm really confused about the state of the Sigma DNA right now. Hmm. Okay, so Lumine has Sigma DNA, right? Correct. Okay. So that makes him immune to the Sigma virus. Yes. But the Sigma DNA gave him a new perspective that he could rebel of his own free will. Yeah. It, it seems like the implication is that, like, Reploids, like, when they're created, like, 99% of them supposedly are, like, cool with working with humans. And so, like, by having those Sigma's perspective in him, he's like, well, actually, things are kind of messed up with, the like, the relations between us. And right. the only way to solve it is by murder. So how is that functionally any different from the Sigma virus? Well, the Sigma virus does kind of, like, scramble, like, your programming a little bit. Like, sometimes it just makes you go completely crazy. Mm -hmm. Whereas Luminate is completely in control. Right. And theoretically, anybody else who would rebel because of this would also theoretically be in control. Okay. Kind of similar to, like, how Sigma is. Like, Sigma, you know, he's kind of goes crazy and whatnot when he gets infected by Zero. But he's still, like, he's still a relatively sound mind. It's, it's kind of similar of Lumine. Right. Okay. So, I will say that seems like a much better conceit than the Sigma virus... Oh, Just a million times. A computer virus. It is. It totally is. Yeah, it, it makes more sense in every possible way. And like, while I don't think the story of this game is too particularly well told. Right. Like, it, it's a good premise that you could use to build off of. And like, it, it kind of makes the whole revealing that, you know, Reply DNA is a thing and, you know, Mega Man Extreme 2 kind of kind of be a little bit more okay now because it's like okay there's a good payoff to this right okay um what made the other new reploids go crazy um or i think revolt that is never specified but i think the presumption is that they were just working with lumine and he's like lumine is like go do trouble and all of them were like yeah sure yeah at least the majority of them yeah okay a lot of reploids seem really influenceable yeah, it's it's one of those things where it's like if if you didn't have the Sigma virus at all, like it'd be like, OK, no, they just don't like being slaves or whatever, or they just want to establish their own nations or or what have you. It's yeah, it, it's like going back to like the Repl Force, like all mm -hmm. their motivations make perfect sense. But and you don't need to ha actually have the Sigma virus be involved at all. Like, yeah, it Repl is just a general like. It's it's one of those things that like where humans like made a a new a new species essentially and was like right hey you have free will isn't that great how about you you paint you paint my house for free I'll pay you in food maybe maybe no guarantees it's it's almost like something else I can't think of that might have involved artificial humans that began with Reply. Mm. 
Yeah. And is and is Okay, but anyway, so that that happened, I guess. That happened and that is kind of set up as an end to the Mega Man X series and other than Mega Man X Command Mission, that basically is it. That is the Mega Man X series. All right. And uh, we're not going to talk about Mega Man X Command Mission because it's not relevant. Though I'm going to share this one little fact with you, Alex, uh, that I think you're going to enjoy. Just kind of like mm. the basic premise of the game. Mm-hmm. X is sent to like investigate like an island uh, by a colonel that like works in the uh, Maverick countries by the name of... Cur- uh, I think it's Commander Redips. Sure. Yeah, it's like R-E-D-I-P-S, I think. Yeah, it sounds about right. Mm. And um, he meets up with this guy who's named Spider, who eventually betrays them. I I was just in the process of spelling Redips backwards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, that's a stupid name. What does it spell backwards? <laughs> yeah, it turns out Spider. <laughs> Wow. That's the only fact I'm going to share about that game. It's kind of a bad RPG. Fair. And of course, I yes, I did indeed own it. I know. <laughs> Didn't have to ask. Nope. So yeah, with that, uh, Mega Man X is over with, and now we can actually move on to what Inifuni wanted to work on. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Mega Man Zero. So, Alex, uh, last I remember, you, you talked about having played a little bit of Mega Man Zero, correct? little bit, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I recently finished the entire series. Like, actually played through it for the first time, and I really, really liked it. Or I just really liked the gameplay and, and some of the story mm. elements in it. There's going to be some elements of the story that are going to be really silly. Yeah. But I am very excited to talk about it, because it's silly in a way that I kind of enjoy. Mm. Because if you think that, like, Mega Man X ups the ante and is like, okay, now things are getting crazy, most of humanity is getting wiped out, Mega Man Zero is the real hold my beer of of all the series. Mm -hmm. I don't know how humanity still exists after this is going to be all done. (laughs) Yeah. At the start, it kind of seems like they almost don't. Yeah, it kind of seems like they don't. (laughs) And somehow it just gets incomprehensibly worse. Let's let's talk a little bit about the origins of Mega Man Zero. So, while the Mega Man X series would continue without Inafune's direct input after X5, he certainly wasn't done with the series. In 2002, a Mega Man series was released for the Game Boy Advance, and it would finally star his golden boy Zero. Mega Man Zero is a series consisting of four games, and it's probably the most notable for actually having an ending. Like, this series has an ending. Mm. Which... Capcom series do not end. Right. They, they never do. Loose ends tied up occasionally? Sure. Ending? No. No. So, this was designed and developed by a team of ex-Capcom employees under a company called Creates, which has actually existed for a lot longer than I expected. They've been around mm. since 96. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, for those of you who don't know, Creates is a company that kind of focuses on making retro-style games. Usually, what if this, but Mega Man? Mm-hmm. Such as, you know, the Gunvolt series or Mighty Number no. 9 or what have you. Uh, they generally are a more hit rather than Miss Company, although they got some misses there here and there. Usually. Uh, yeah. It, they were it, involved in Bloodstained as well, I believe. They were. Yeah, they. Um, I think they did some work on main Bloodstained and they did the um, Curse of the Moon games. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Which are quite good. Quite good games, yes. Yeah, generally, if you want them to make, like, a lovingly retro-style game, kind of, like, gussied up for modern standards, they are usually the company to go with, and they'll they'll yep. do a good job with it. And just last but not least, they also were the ones who made Mega Man 9 and 10. Oh, yeah, so, that's right. Yeah, also very good games. Yes. Yeah, so they worked very closely with uh, Inafune. And this series is actually pretty interesting in that uh, Indie Creates actually proposed this to Capcom. Yeah, I, for the longest time, I thought it was like Inafune was trying to make this series happen, but it actually was right. the other way around. Huh, interesting. Yeah. So, this game stars Zero, who now is fighting alongside a Reploid Resistance against the humans 100 years after the latest events in Mega Man X. The game can play as a pretty big departure from the rest of the series, while still superficially Mega Man, with boss weaknesses and the like, 
the gameplay has a bigger focus on hash, hack and slash gameplay and combos, which I really love. Mm-hmm. I really love the gameplay of this. Yeah. It's also a far tougher game in general with a ranking system and a very strict lies system. Like, it saves your lies. If you have zero lies, it's just game over. Reload that yeah. last save, which can get yeah. you to some really bad situations. Yeah, you can really screw yourself over in this game. Yeah. They, they fix that for later games, which is probably for the best, but yeah. I, I kind of appreciate that they were going for it. Well, actually, interestingly, Mega Man Zero didn't start with Zero as the main protagonist, as any creates initially developed the game without him in mind. However, it was Inafune who insisted that he be the main character. <laughs> yeah, and, that makes sense. And to be fair, any creates didn't really argue. They were like, eh, okay, sure. The team wanted to focus on blurring the lines between hero and villain, with Zero and the Resistance being depicted as terrorists fighting against humanity rather than for it like in the previous games. Right. They also wanted to blur the line between Replate and Human as well in the character designs, and it's actually very hard to tell the difference between the two. They have a few telltale signs, but for the most part, a human and a replate might as well look similar. Mm-hmm. And they also make sure that they meet like many replates during the game and like hear like individual backstories. Like one I really want to give a shout out to is this like older replate named Andrew, who like talks about how he's like lived like for a long time. Like he had his he was like married to a human wife, and then when she died, like he wanted to like make himself like an older robot. And so he yeah, got put into like a new older robot body and like he like talks about how he like, used to bake bread for a living. Like they actually like want you to like care about these replates more. Right. Which is good. I the me- big failing of Mega Man X series, in my opinion, is that it's so X and Zero and Sigma focused mm-hmm. that you don't it might as well be like nobody else exists. Right. So this game has some difficulties in development. Uh, this mostly came out of Capcom's decision to continue the Mega Man X series. So a lot yeah. of yeah, a lot of elements had to be altered to fit the ever-evolving Mega Man timeline. And there's also some really weird decisions that any creates made as well, like at the final hour. We'll talk about some of those changes because if we we mention them now, they would be spoilers. Mm-hmm. So let's at first dive into the story of Mega Man Zero. So, Mega Man Zero, once again, takes place sometime after the events of Mega Man X8, at least, if not more than 100 years in the future. So, the game starts with a young blonde woman running through, like, an abandoned laboratory with a couple of men in green uniforms and a weird energy fairy. We're going to be talking a lot about weird energy fairies, by the way. Yeah, I figured we would. So, they're pursued by a giant metal golem and a couple of Replate soldiers. And these Replate soldiers are very interesting because they look an awful lot like X, but replace like X's face with just like a mono eye, just like a giant red eye. Mm-hmm. These are called Pantheons, and they're like the main soldiers of uh, the humans in this game. So one of the soldiers sacrifices himself to buy the woman some time as they come across the thing they are searching for, a half-destroyed red Replate hooked up to a bunch of wires in this like flooded laboratory. The woman and the remaining soldier argue about what to do before he's just gunned down by the blue replates. So, as they slowly advance, the fairy tells the woman, who he learned is named Ciel, that she will sacrifice her power to fix and activate the robot. She flies to the robot, disappears in a puff of energy, and like magic, the robot is fixed, revived, and his awesome theme kicks in. <laughs> and we learn that this robot is is the legendary Reploid Zero. Now, Zero's had quite the design overhaul. Uh, he um, has a much, like, sleeker-looking design. I would say even more anime, but, like, a very mm-hmm. distinct sort of look. Uh, he seems to be wearing more, like, a red vest now and kind of, like, a, like a white thong. It's 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 a it's a look that you look at, you're like, I, I kind of don't like this, but it grows mm-hmm. on you. Yeah. Like, I actually really now like how he looks. But yeah, he um, he seems to be kind of like am have, has have like amnesia and whatnot. But CL is like, hey, can you, can you help me with this? Mm-hmm. And Cyril's like, all right. And so he just like rips through them, <laughs> and they seemingly escape the lab. But then like the giant metal gloom shows back up and takes CL hostage. Zero at first appears powerless to like stop him when all of a sudden a computer screen turns on, and a voice booms out telling Zero to use this before somehow shooting the Z saber out of the screen. <laughs> Zero grabs it, destroys the gloom, and he and CL escape. So I, I might as well describe what CL looks like. 
Uh, Seal is a human repway researcher who's a roughly about like 16 years old. I, I don't think there's an actual ever age like given to her. But she has like very long blonde hair. It's like wearing um, a pink vest and skirt. She has a very rural sort of look to her, I would mm -hmm. say. And she's kind of like the main human point character in this. She's a genius uh, researcher, and we'll talk more about how genius she is later in the game in ways that are very uh, Dr. Kane-like, I'll say. Mm. Mm. She makes some decisions. <laughs> so they arrive at the Resistance base, and here's where we learn a little bit more about the state of the world. So the last hundred years have not been kind. The world has been reduced to ash and desert. Only one real city remains, called Neo-Arcadia. And this is where the last of the humans and Reploids live. It was founded a long time ago by Mega Man X as a place to gather the survivors from a war even more terrible than the Maverick Wars. The very dumbly named Elf Wars. Oh god, that's right. So, we technically learned about this, like, I think, like, in uh, Mega Man 03, but we're going to talk about this now. So you see, sometime after X8, the Sigma virus is finally eradicated through the use of new and revolutionary technology called Cyber Elves. Now, if you remember from Mega Man X8, you're probably saying, wait, but didn't they already find a way to make the Sigma virus <laughs> irrelevant? And, mm -hmm. that, and the answer is yes. They developed <laughs> that game after Mega Man Zero, so that right. kind of messes everything up. Honestly, X8 has probably the better solution. Probably. Cyber elves are maybe the dumbest thing ever made. <laughs> Cyber elves are sentient computerized programs that are basically floating energy made manifest. Uh, they are also occasionally replicate souls. It just sort of depends on the situation. So they can accomplish a wide variety of tasks, but most famously, they are used to cleanse the Maverick fires from replicates. This, however, comes with a downside. Boy, is it a hell of a downside. In most cases, using a cyber elf will train it of its energy, and since it's basically manifested energy, this means by using a cyber elf, you effectively kill it as it will cease to exist afterwards, and you cannot bring it back. I see. Why did they make these sentient? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why somebody purposely made a sentient program that exists to die in service of others. <laughs> like, it seems like this wouldn't be a problem if it just wasn't sentient. Yeah, there's, they could have, yeah, they could have just made a program. But for some reason, they're like, well, what if we gave it a personality that we could connect with? Like, if it needs an intelligence to do its job, could you just make it like a hive mind or something? Or Right? It really just points to the fact that the humans of the Mega Man universe are just, maybe just downright malicious. Yeah, just kind of the worst. Like, I feel just like if there was, like, a food crisis, humanity would be like, what if we made, like, food that grows itself, but is also uh, sentient and can talk to us? Yeah. And, and then, then what if it, it screams as we eat it? Yeah, that, it's exactly what they would do. It is 100% what they would do. Also, okay, I feel like this is something that keeps coming up. What is the deal with airborne computer programs? Well, I guess the way I'm looking at it is like, it's kind of like how, you know, people are really into the idea that you could just set your phone down somewhere and it automatically charges or a lot of research that's going into like, hey, what if uh, you could just beam electricity and right. not use wires? I, I, you know, maybe it's kind of like an offshoot of that a little bit. Maybe. Sure. Because like, I feel like trying to understand what the Sigma virus is misses the point. Hmm. But wasn't that an airborne computer virus? Yeah, and I guess somebody decided, well, what if we made that into elves? Yeah, that Sigma virus seems to be very resilient, kind of does cool things. Uh, but it really infects a bunch of maverick, like replicates, makes a maverick. Right. But what if we fought fire with fire and made a sentient program that dies every time we use it? And also is kind of physical, but kind of not. Yeah. It's also really weird because, like, replays can see cyber elves, but not humans, unless humans have a special device, like CL has one. So they're also uh, invisible to people. Okay. Are they microwaves? I guess. They're microwaves that can stay in one place. Are robots just magic? 
at this point, yes. I, I think by the time we get to Mega Man Zero, the whole, you know, science will become sufficiently advanced to be indistinguishable from magic quote basically becomes right. true. Yeah. It's it's very dumb. It's very dumb. Yeah. So Okay, um, so there's elves now. There are elves now. And unfortunately, the power of the cyber elves was too much for others to ignore, so they began to misuse their powers, and that's what led to the elf wars. A war so devastating that resulted in the loss of 90% of all replates and 60% of all humans over a four-year period. Okay, I feel like... Well, wait, how many reploids were there to begin with? Uh, unknown. Yeah. So I was going to say the idea that more reploids than humans died doesn't feel right. Reploids seem way more resilient. Mm. But maybe in terms of sheer numbers. Yeah, and you know those humans were sending those reploids off to die. They're like, we're not picking up a gun. You, you, you I mean, go. Yeah. You go fight the cyber elves or whatever the people controlling the cyber elves. But I mean, I'm assuming there were also just like dozens of human cities that just got cremated at some point. Oh, absolutely. Given there's only one human city left. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, totally. Yeah. Th like nature doesn't exist anymore. Right. <laughs> yeah. How is 40% of humanity still left if there's only one city? I... My guess is that from Mega Man X5 onwards, there probably has been less than, like, 500 million humans. Yeah, that's also probably true. Because I bet you you can't put a whole lot of humans underground and have things go well. True, yeah. Humanity's, uh, they're in a rough spot. They are verge of extinction rough spot right now. Yeah. Although, the lives they live in Neo Arcadia, after X founds it, uh, is very good. Like, they live, like, lap of luxury. Like, he was very, very fair to humans. And for a while, he was fair to the Replates as well. Hmm. However, one day he disappeared and then later reappeared like a year or two later and was changed. He was still fair to the humans, but he began to per like persecute the Replates for even the most minor of infractions. So, like, you would basically, like, pick up a can or litter or something like that and you'd be like, oh, you're a maverick. We need to destroy you. Right. And they also were like were basically enslaved again. Like, here's your pickaxe, go do your thing. So a resistance was formed with CL as the leader in order to fight back against X and his guardians, and the, with the hope of obtaining equal rights for all reploids. Okay, so I, I have a question about this. This mm -hmm. happened. Yes. Were all of the humans of Neo Arcadia just like, oh yeah, X, that seems cool. You show those reploids. Yeah, pretty much. There's gonna be a there's gonna be something that's gonna be expanded upon in Mega Man Zero Two, where I I feel like they're like, oh, we need to actually explain this a little bit more. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh yeah, all of humanity was just like, yeah, not rad. Because that that seems very clearly like X either contracted a virus or got someone's DNA in his DNA. Yeah, kind of. And does, now doesn't he's it? crazy. Yeah. There might be a little explanation as what happened with that, but yeah, it's very, very strange. So, CL pleads with Zero to help put a stop to X's tyranny, and while Zero has no memory of X or anything much at all, he decides to help her out. So he goes on a variety of missions, defeating Replates and stopping various attacks on the Resistance base and doing other things. Like, they're trying to find a way to infiltrate Neo Arcadia and take the fight to X, but they're having very little success with that. And... On top of that, X sends his four guardians after him. I'm going to pull up a picture of the four guardians here. Oh, damn. There's only four this time. There's only four. There are also actually like uh, like other like mavericks as well that Zero sure. has to fight against. They're like animals. Like mm. They actually keep that going forward, but they're not they're not as interesting to talk about. I'm like, yeah, they actually kind of they have like really dumb names, but they're actually sensible. It's like, oh, it's an it's it's an ice moose. It's like, all right, no, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, all right. So we're just going to talk about the Guardians, but these Guardians include their leader, Sage Harpunia, who's like, who's a green X who can fly. Mm -hmm. There's Fighting Fefner, who is the very powerful, shooty red X. There is Fairy Leviathan, who is the lady X who swims in the water and is also blue. And there's Hidden Phantom, who is Ninja X. 
Now, these four guardians are based upon X's DNA core, and they originally were tasked to find ways to repair the Earth's polluted surface, but eventually were repurposed to lead X's armies. So, despite the fact that these should be far more advanced than Zero, he managed to defeat the though not destroy all of them, with the exception of Phantom, who tries blowing himself up to take down Zero, and mm. completely fails. Uh, unless you're me, and when I first played the game, and he actually managed to get me caught with his desperation attack, and I died, and I had to redo the fight. Ah, uh, it's one of those. Yeah, it really sucked. Because it only does like two points of damage, and I, mm. I had one point of health left. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so... Despite all this, CL is no closer to breaking through Neo Arcadia's encryption, which means a direct assault on X just isn't going to happen. CL then proceeds to blame herself. After all, she notes, she was the one who recreated X. All right. Let's do it. This is... I don't know how I feel about this plot twist. So the X that is leading Neo Arcadia is presumably not the real X. It's actually a copy of him, which we'll just refer to as Copy X. So, a cyber elf then just suddenly flies down between CL and Zero and tells both of them that he's broken the encryption and they can enter Neo Arcadia at any time. <laughs> Real Deus Ex Machina sort of thing. Yeah, alright, sure. So Zero's like, alright, goes to Neo Arcadia. So, he fights through Neo Arcadia, beats up the Guardians again, and confronts Copy X. Copy X seems happy to finally meet Zero, but then things become frosty when Zero is just like, oh, you're just a pirate copy of X, like, whatever. <laughs> he quickly corrects Zero, and he's like, no, I'm a perfect copy. I've managed to create a utopia where humanity's never been happier. What have you done? He's like, the original X and Zero could never accomplish this. Just a bunch of people died. That's all that happened, which is like, eh, eh, fair. Yeah. 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 We kind of were. Zero points out is like, well, he who could only create this by destroying so many replays, which Copy X is like, replays suck, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> which is like, wait, you're a replay? Okay, cool. I mean, yeah. So he managed, he covers himself with a gold armor and takes the fight to zero. The problem is, and this is a big reason why Copy X is kind of crazy, he doesn't have mm. X's memories, he doesn't have like the same like 30 years in the capsule to make sure he doesn't be, he ain't be crazy mm. like the original X had, and he also has never been in a fight. Oh. Which is a real problem when you're fighting Zero. Yeah. Who bodies him. <laughs> so he manages to defeat Copy X, leaving a mostly broken shell. Zero comments that he's disappointed, because he now remembers a few things about X. He wasn't nearly this weak, and he wasn't naive like Copy X, and that's what makes him a hero. Copy X proceeds to self-destruct, nearly takes Zero with him, but Zero manages to escape and is like found laying in a desert. The cyber elf that was from before comes down and speaks with him. He tells mm -hmm. him he's been fighting so long after Zero disappeared, and much to his pain and suffering, but eventually he just could no longer care about anything, and he just had to go away. He then manifests himself into the ghost of X and tells him that he's leaving the world to him and to let him rest for a while before disappearing. Zero agrees to do this, telling him that's why they're the best partners, because they pick up each other's slack. As then, he's surrounded by Neo Arcadian forces, and as the game ends, he proceeds to, like, go and take the fight to them. And that's Mega Man Zero. You know what? I don't, I don't hate that ending, actually. I think that's pretty good. I, I like the ending. I like the ending an awful lot. This is what we're going to talk a little bit about some of the changes they did, though, because I mm -hmm. think they did some bad changes to this. Mm. So, any Crate's initial proposal was that it was not going to be a copy X. It was going to just be X. Right. Which I like. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of X just, like, fighting for hundreds of years and just getting burned down, just being like, whatever, rep plays kind of suck. Right. I'm not actually a rep play. I just want to protect the humans. Y'all look what the world's like, and then somebody has to go and, like, beat the hell out of them like i like right. that so any creates proposes to inafune and inafune is like yeah sounds good do it mm -hmm. and they're like great one month before the game was supposed to be released they changed their mind hmm. they were like actually the Mega Man x series is still happening and kids look up to x i think this is a bad idea we, we should make him a copy right right so they rejiggered the game at the absolute last minute from my understanding and um, 
this led to another problem because they now had to explain who made copy X. And so they went, right. What about CL? This led to being like, and this is all from an interview from, um, uh, the Mega Man zero complete works. Mm -hmm. They talk about, it's like, okay, well we need to come up with a backstory for CL now. Cause she's like 16. They're like, okay, well she was actually part of a program that she was genetically modified to be a genius. And at <sighs> age eight, she created copy X and all of the guardians. And somebody decided that, like, all right, good job, eight-year-old. <laughs> this is a great idea. Uh, mm, <laughs> little shades okay. of Dr. Kane there. Just a little, like, A hmm, little yeah. bit. Okay, so I can roll with Copy X. Like, I can, <laughs> I can see the thinking. And I don't... Whether or not it being X or Copy X, regardless of which is better, I think they're both fine. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think ultimately it's, it's, they're both fine decisions. Yeah. But that's stupid. Yeah, the the, the CL stuff is. That that's really dumb. Yeah, CL should not have created Copy X. It should have been somebody else, or just not do the entire explanation, or make her yeah. older, or something like. Or, I don't know. Like, if you're gonna have an X elf, just have just have X's DNA soul have split into two, hmm. yeah. and one of them became copy x and built himself a new body or something or damn i don't know dr wiley <laughs> no that would be worse <laughs> <laughs> i mean i would laugh i would be i would love to tell that story but right. no <laughs> no <laughs> i i do like the idea of like him splitting apart like it'd be kind of cool if like his soul left yeah. his body and then like but there was still like x around and he's like well, I don't have a soul now, but I have a directive. Right. Like, that'd be cool. Yeah, all right, sure. But yeah, that's the changes they went with. And, like, it's it's a very, like, X-War style story, like, where it's, like, not the most complicated in the world. And, right. Like, like, the whole Elf War stuff is not explained, like, in this game. So, like, mm -hmm. you throw that out. It's just a very simple story. If, like, Zero comes back, he defeats X. And, um, you know, he plates and humanity you live in harmony now i guess or something like it, it works out fine for what it is right so mega man zero two decides to complicate things of course so zero two takes place a year after the first game zero has been wandering the desert endlessly fighting neo arcadian forces getting more and more battered as time goes on and eventually his body just gives out so go ahead yeah it feels like that wouldn't really be a sustainable strategy it really isn't. There's no real explanation why Zero doesn't try to find resistance or anything like that, but... Mm. Mm. So, he uh, gets rescued by Harpuna, who okay. drops him off in front of the resistance base, and it's just like, found your boy, roll him out of the car, drive off. Uh, so, we learn that Harpuna has taken over command of Neo Arcadia alongside the rest of the Guardians. Copy X's death has been covered up, so the human populace isn't upset, but otherwise the war continues. So, Zero's repaired inside the base, and CL's just, like, super happy about this. He's like, oh, man, my sort of... The Replay guy I have a crush on his back. This is great. Wait, who's running the war now? Uh, so Harpuna and the Guardians are running it on the Neo Arcadian side, and we're about to talk about who's running it on the Resistance side. Okay, because didn't the Harpuna just give Zero back to the Resistance? Harpuna becomes a bit of an anti-hero. He becomes kind of like a base or Zero figure, oddly enough, in this series right. going forward. Yeah, it's a, it, it's kind of str it's a real strange thing where like the Guardians all kind of like Zero. They always like want to fight him and or kiss him, depending <laughs> on the situation. And it's all Fair. three of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So they're, they just saw him like, ah, well, we want to beat you in a fair fight. Let's, let's take you to the ER, buddy. You're a little drunk. Throw you out, car. Like, <laughs> so we learn the resistance has undergone some changes. CL, being a scientist, is no longer in control by her choice. And okay. she's appointed a new replay by the name of Elpizio, and he is put in command. And let me let me pull up a good old photo of Elpizio. Look at that guy. He's not a villain. So, yeah, Elpizio looks like male Ciel in some ways. Like he also has long flowing blonde hair, and he wears a lot of pink, and he has a sword. 
mm-hmm. which admittedly Ciel doesn't have a sword, but you know, she, she probably could rock one. Probably could. Yeah. He is a Reploid who like escaped Neo Arcadia back in the day. And like, he just really, really wants to help out the resistance. And, mm-hmm. you know, Ciel puts him in charge and he has a new goal. Destroy Neo Arcadia, the last human city. Yep. Makes sense. Ciel is shockingly okay with this. Because it allows her to focus on her goal to create a new energy source that will solve the energy crisis. You're probably asking yourself, what energy crisis? Yeah, I kind of am. So it's pretty clear that they figured they needed to have a good reason for Copy X to be just kind of a jerk to the Reploids. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is as Neo Arcadia grew, uh, the energy that they were generating just wasn't enough a lot of it was because Reploid is becoming more and more advanced and requiring more and more energy. And humans want to live in luxury, and that requires energy because they have like five monitors for every computer, and they just like, they just have the heat on all the time. This is the worst. Yeah. So This what is ha- the worst explanation they could have come up with. It's kind of awful. <laughs> so this appears to be an attempt to give a reason why Copy X was, you know, persecuting the Reploids. There wasn't enough energy for everyone, so the Reploids were enslaved or destroyed so that humanity could prosper. So CL decides, like, well, if I create a new energy source, there'll be no reason for all this. And she starts synthesizing the energy based upon the designs of what's called the Baby Elf, a cyber elf based on the grandmama of all elves, the Mother Elf. (sighs) You remember back in Mega Man Extreme 2? Wait, what? Yeah, when, you know, like, DNA souls and high count the souls of Reploids could be used as an energy source. It all comes back around, baby. This is really dumb. It's so dumb. All of this is really dumb. <laughs> oh, it's going to get even dumber. So, while at first reluctant to help Alpizios burn Neo Arcadia to the ground plan, he just, Zero decides to help because he really believes in CL. Like, that's always been Zero's crux. Like, if he believes in you, he'll do whatever he can to help you out. Like, he believed in X, and now he believes in CL. Right. So, he takes off and fights a bunch of Reploid commanders, and during this time, Zero manages actually to run back into what we're just going to call Elf X. You know, X, that uh, that's a cyber elf. Sure. This is where we learn all about the Elf Wars. He just kind of just drops that on Zero. There's a mm. really good line where, at the end of it, Zero's like, what's the point of all this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> which, is, which is like, <laughs> fair enough, Zero. <laughs> yeah, fair. solid question. So there is a point because he wants Zero. I mean, X wants to point out to Zero that he managed to end the war by sealing what was called the Dark Elf in his body, which is still back at Neo Arcadia. Oh my god, what? The Dark Elf can't be released under any circumstances, otherwise, it might doom literally everything with its evil power. Wait, he sealed it inside his body? Yes. Which is not Copy X. No. Yeah, so he bit, mysteriously disappears. Everyone's like, where is he? And turns out he's just somewhere in a broom closet. And that's when CL's like, I'm eight and a genius. I will make a new X. I will make a new X. And they're like, oh, sweet summer child. Oh, wait, actually, you did it. Good job, child. Good job. We will ask no follow up questions about this X. Can you make four more X's? All with a fun elemental power? Can you make them good at murdering? <laughs> so we learn about all this, and after doing mm. a bunch of missions for Elpizio, uh, Elpizio feels confident enough to attack Neo Arcadia. Despite Zero telling him it's not going to be easy, they have an army. Elpizio basically goes, Pish posh, we'll murder a lot of them, before proceeding to get a bunch of Reploids and humans killed, and himself captured by the Guardians. Okay. So Zero manages to rescue him, but Elpizio then disappears. And he, like, he appears on like a view screen at Resistance Base. He's like, man, I'm sorry. I really messed up. But I promise you, I promise to find a way to revive the Dark Elf and use his powers to kill all the humans to destroy Neo Arcadia. He just comes out and says this. Right. Ciel is concerned about his well-being. So she sends Zero after him. It's like, oh man, we got to get Elpizio back. It seems, seems like things are going bad for him. And it's like, no, you need to murder him. Yeah. Also, how does everyone know about the Dark Elf all of a sudden? And also, what is it? Oh, we're going to get into what the Dark Elf is. (laughs) 
So Zero tracks him to various places. He finds the second of the baby elves. The baby elves are a pair. And he figures out sure. that Elpizio knows that he has to destroy X's original body in order to free the Dark Elf. He tracks Elpizio to the center of Neo Arcadia, but he's too late. He watches him destroy X's dormant body, freeing the Dark Elf. He tries to take control of the Dark Elf's power, but all it does is corrupt him, and Zero manages to defeat him. So, Elpizio, as he lays dying, regrets his actions. And this seemingly moves the Dark Elf, like, and causes him, causes the Dark Elf to turn him into a Cyber Elf, saving his life. The Dark Elf then flies away! <laughs> what? Elf X then shows up, tells Zero she used to be called the Mother Elf, but was sadly corrupted by a man named Dr. Vile, who used her to start the Elf Wars. What? <laughs> Sometime later, we hear a mysterious person telling a robot named Omega that it's time to wake up as the Dark Elf is back in action. And that's Mega Man Zero 2. This is dumb. Yeah. Everything about this game's plot is so stupid. Oh, it's so bad. This game's plot is so stupid. <laughs> Nobody's... Everything about it is the worst decision. Nobody's smart about this. Let's put the clearly evil replit in charge of resistance. The one who's like, we should destroy all the humans. They're like, no, no, solid. Yes, we should do that. Why, Why does CL just go along with any of this? Well, you know, she needs some time to work on her new energy source that's going to solve the energy crisis. How Please. is this time? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's great because she picks literally the worst person. She makes literally the most wrong choice. Like, you figure, yeah. like, Zero shows up, she should be like, oh, Zero, hey, you want to be in charge yeah. of all this? But no, no, she picks the worst possible person. And then, like, yeah, X shows up to, like, give some information, but, like, I'm not going to give you all of it. And then shows up later to be like, yeah, that was the mother elf at one point. Also, there was a scientist. I mean, I guess I could have mentioned it earlier, but he yeah. was evil. Anyways, you don't have to worry about him. Definitely not. What? Man named Dr. Vile. Don't worry about that. I'm still stuck on the energy crisis thing because this is really stupid. Mm -hmm. This energy crisis is really stupid. It doesn't make any sense and it didn't need to exist. Like the idea that... The idea that Copy X, whatever he is, decided to persecute Reploids just because fuck Reploids mm -hmm. is interesting, at least, for a villain to do. Yeah. And, but no, it's we needed the energy because reasons? Because everyone was using too much energy and there was just no way that we could use less of it. Yeah. And, like, I, I feel like it would have worked okay if this was introduced in the first game instead of just being kind of, like, a weird, hasty, hasty like, explanation right. to, like, kind of, like, explain Copy X's actions a little bit more. Because you could see sort of logic, like, the world's destroyed. There's not really a whole lot of, like, ways to get energy. Like, it makes a little bit more sense. Like, I think it's I think it's still better that, yeah, you, Copy X is just like, ah, kind of screw Reploids. Like, I, I actually kind of like that more, just like you. yeah. But, like, by just throwing this in Mega Man Zero Two, it's, like, it's clear that they wanted to expand upon the world because there's four games in the series, but it's very clear that they have a trilogy in mind. Right. And they start that trilogy in Mega Man Zero Two, and it's it makes it very awkward. Yeah. Also, isn't the Buster Cannon solar-powered? Yeah. I mean, and there's a lot of land now that's, you know, probably good... Probably so you can't tell me on. solar energy isn't a viable solution. Well, you know, maybe it's maybe they're just really against green energy. Maybe they can only maybe the only energy source they care about is if somebody dies when it happens. And by somebody, you know I mean a, an elf. You know what? Maybe so. <laughs> we built this new energy reactor that runs on suffering. <laughs> Fantastic. Good job, Hex. Excellent. Yes, exactly uh. as intended. Uh, well, don't worry. In Mega Man Zero Three, it's uh, it's gonna get better. It's gonna by better, I mean worse. Oh boy! Because shortly after the end of Mega Man Zero Two, CL has managed to complete her new type of energy. So the energy crisis has now been solved. 
However, not oh. all is good, as out of nowhere, a giant sword-like spaceship crashes into the ground, and Zero goes off to investigate. What? Oh, it gets better. So he runs into Leviathan and Fefnir, and they're engaged in a battle against a giant, this giant knight-looking robot named Omega, which I'll, I'll bring a picture up. Ah, look at that guy. He's really... That's pretty good, actually. I, I think he looks like a Kingdom Hearts character. I mean, yes, he does, but... <laughs> So he's, um, imagine, like, if you know Kingdom Hearts, uh, well, there's, like, a ton of, like, characters who look like knights in there. Just think of one of those. Uh, yeah. For those of you who are not familiar with that, he is a reploid that has, like, wearing, like, kind of, like, an all-white sort of, like, cloak and armor with incredibly giant pauldrons and arms that are just, I guess, are, like, maglev attached to his rest of his body and has, like, a giant beam sword and a long... Yep. Like a purple mohawk hair ponytail thing. Don't know how to describe that hairstyle, but nope. Yeah, it's it is there. It is there. It is it's extremely it is the, there. It is the most there. So they are trying to fight against him, and they're just having no luck. Uh, Zero fights him and manages to like succeed in like at least holding him off. But this is when things get very confusing because all of a sudden, an old man in a weird flying spacesuit just shows up. He's calling himself Dr. Vile, spelled W-E-I-L, and also just literally just Vile in Japan. All right. So he is an old man in literally like a floating space suit with like an orange cone head, and it looks like it's like there's like water or some sort of fluid in there. And he come, he shows up and he's like, hey, yeah, no, nah, this is my bot. His name's Omega. He's great. And he tells everyone he's in control of them. And the Guardians are prepared to fight him, but he reveals that he's revived Copy X. Okay. So Copy X is a bit worse for wear. He's, like, constantly stuttering and in general just kind of doesn't seem right. Like He's, like, a little too chipper. Okay. <laughs> and that being said, though, the Guardians immediately fall into line behind X. Like, at first they're like, well, we don't really want to fight the Resistance. I mean, they created this much energy and whatnot. And we also kind of like Zero. You know, he's, he's a fine guy, but they see Copy X and they're like, oh, Master X. But X is, like, kind of done with him. He's like, he proceeds to demote all of them, and he places Dr. Vile in charge. And Dr. Vile tells everyone the plan is to find a dark elf and crush the resistance. And he's going to do this with his uh, new, ta like, force of, like, reploids called the Eight Gentle Judges. Oh, Alex. I was... So does anyone have their own motivation in this world? Like, why would anyone go along with any of that? The Guardian's motivation is basically do whatever X tells him to do. Which is not a good motivation, but I don't know. Maybe it's just because they have his DNA and they're like, ah, oh, yeah, X, he's cool. Yeah, it's... I don't but know. But he just told them to screw off. Yeah, he did. But they, they still work for him. They're just kind of sad now. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's in charge of Neo Arcadia? Well... Right now, technically X, but he's more of a puppet to Dr. Vile. Right. Okay. So, so the Guardians were in charge. Yeah. And then Vile shows up and says, look, I made X. Mm -hmm. And then the Guardians say, cool, X is in charge. And then X says, Vile's in charge. Yes. So basically... Vile just waved an X in front of them and said, I'm in charge now. Oh, it gets even better, too, because, like, Dr. Vile's a known war criminal. And so, like, the Guardians are like, wait, X, why would you be working with them? And he's like, don't worry about that. And they're like, all right. Also, the plan is now crush the resistance who ended the energy crisis. So why are they still at war? Well, Doc, well, we'll get into why Dr. Vile wants to do that, but he basically is like, we can't trust him with the en with the new energy. We need to take that for ourselves. Like, that's his okay. that's his logic right now. Okay. Could CL just be like, all right, here you go, well, and give it to them? CL reasonably doesn't trust Dr. Vile. Sure. Did she not give it to Neo Arcadia before he showed up? My understanding is that it literally was, like, finished basically oh, the day before. like, ten minutes ago. Okay. Yeah, so it's like, she hadn't had really, like, time to do so. All right. Hmm. So, yeah. 
So Zero has to fight against the eight gentle judges, who are former justices who, alongside X, would decide if a replay was a maverick or not. They've been brainwashed by Dr. Vile, but honestly, don't be sad for them, because they basically sent a bunch of innocent replays to their death when they were normal. <laughs> sure. Would you like to know how a replay trial works? Um, I'm guessing it's basically along the lines of, well, you're a reploid and you stand accused of a crime, so execution. You know, more or less, yes, but somehow worse. Mm. So I, I pulled this off from a developer blog that I'm not sure how true all this actually is. Okay. But I'm going to say that it's so bonkers that I just want to repeat it anyways. Because it just, it just sounds too good. Because it's a three-trial system where first, in the screaming session... Okay. Six replays, six members of the ju like six justices in interrogate the replay. Mm -hmm. If he's found guilty or if she is found guilty, you then move on to the grief section, where the replay is executed by a grim reaper scythe, held by one of the other justices who did not participate. And in the pain section, the chief judge renders judgment with a loud voice that shakes the ground and booms out to the city. Also, no one was ever acquitted. That anybody who ends right. up in front of them is dead, right? Which is why you shouldn't feel sad that they got ta that their minds got taken over and then are subsequently destroyed by zero. Why did their minds need to get taken over? They sound evil. Yeah, the it is explained in the developer blog that you know they had did have a true sense of justice and that they went along with the trials reluctantly. Also, if Vile can take over people's minds, why didn't they just say he took over the Guardians' minds? You know? <laughs> because then you wouldn't have Harpuna fighting alongside Zero. Alright, fair enough. <laughs> so, so as Zero's defeating the, ju the judges, the Dark Elf is found. But before the Resistance can capture him, we'll, Dr. Vile decides to um, distract him by firing a missile at a populated area of Neo-Arcadia. Forcing Zero to stop him, lest he, you know, kills a ton of people. Right. So this allows Omega to capture and absorb the Dark Elf, giving it immense power and completing his programming. Because apparently it was incomplete without uh, the Dark Elf. Alright, sure. Harpuna tries fighting against his powered-up Omega, but is easily defeated, and, like, Zero scoops him up and takes him back to the Resistance space for repairs. Mm. So Zero manages to defeat the rest of the judges shortly thereafter, it's shortly after this that Copy X contacts Resistance. In exchange for CL's energy system, he will grant amnesty to all the Mavericks. So CL doesn't trust him and refuses to do so. Okay, good. So Copy X is like, well, that's okay. I already had an attack planned anyways. And a three-pronged attack happens on Resistance base that barely gets fought off. Like he even manages to like fight his way inside New Arcadia, comes face to face with Copy X and like fights him. Mm -hmm. And, like, Copy X, like, tries to transform, but, like, Dr. Vile, like, did, doesn't want Copy X to get too powerful. So he booby-trapped his body in case he tried to do that, and just blows up. So Copy oh. X is dead. Okay. Turns out this was part of Dr. Vile's plan, though. Because the destruction of Copy X is broadcast live to the citizens of New Arcadia. And Dr. Vile pleads with the citizens to make them their new leader so he can crush the evil resistance that killed our benevolent leader. They agree to this, and... Dr. Vile proceeds to use the Dark Elf to take control of all the replays in the world. This brief... What? Yeah. It can do that? Oh, yeah, apparently. <laughs> apparently, once it gets absorbed in Omega, it just gets super powerful. And you can just do it all around the world at once. Oh. So, this briefly includes Zero, but thanks to Elf X, uh, the Resistance space is spared and, like, Zero is cured. And he also opens up a way to New Arcadia, like, to where file is not just like where copy x was but like to the very center so that he can go and fight him so zero fights his way through neo arcadia again he destroys the baby elves and other enemies before confronting dr vile vile six omega on him but after a difficult battle he's defeated however it turns out he only destroyed his shell and from his broken remains a replicate emerges looking just like zero and it's this boy right here who literally just looks like Zero. He's just, yeah. he has red eyes and he's he has a evil aura around him. So, this is where Vile reveals that Zero isn't the real one. Omega is. So it turns out that when Zero sealed himself away uh, the first time, 
Dr. Mm-hmm. Vile, then a researcher working with X to create the Mother Elf, he dis- like he did some experiments on this body in the hopes of creating the ideal weapon to end the Maverick Wars. And from that came Omega. We also find out that he proposed the plan to combine Omega and the Mother Elf to just simply rob Reploids of their free will. A plan that X was not really for. He was like, no, that sounds mm-hmm. bad. We shouldn't do that. Yeah. So... Vile wanted to do that because he felt the Replays deserved rep- retribution for the horrors of the Maverick Wars. However, after this rejection, Vile decided to launch the Elf Wars, even though it was technically like a popular plan with the human population, like X was standing in the way, so he's like, well, fine, I'm just going to destroy everything. How's that sound? It's a very right. wily esque move. Yeah. Except with more murder. So Zero manages to fight his original body to a standstill, despite it supposedly being more powerful than him. Uh, Vile tries to get Omega to merge with the Dark Elf again, but the Guardians show up and they're like, hey, we're fighting alongside of you. And he, they damage Omega and prevent it from occurring. Wait, why did Omega unmerge with the Dark Elf? It's, I don't quite remember. I think it's like when he originally used the power to like take over all the replays, it like briefly unmerged with them. It's, it's a little confusing. Okay. Or it might have been because like his original body got destroyed, like the, the armor body, and it, it flew out of him. It's one of those two. Right. Yeah. Either way, he's supposed to reabsorb him, but the Guardians come back and, like, stop him from doing that. So, X shows up again once more to tell him that while Omega is his real body, his soul is his own, and it's in his new body. And at first it seems like, oh, you're just kind of just pumping up Zero. That's cool. It's just, That's nice of you. But then right. X is like, no, no, really, it's actually your soul in there, because you, you actually came back once before to help me fight Dr. Vile. And, and put a stop to him before you decide to seal yourself up again. So I, I actually know this is true. So d- don't worry about it, buddy. You are definitely How the real one. How many times is Zero going to reincarnate? <laughs> like, it's actually ridiculous now. You know, I want you to give me a number between 1 and 10. 7. All right. Keep that number in mind. And later on, I will reveal the answer to you. Great. When you get to the final time that Zero dies. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> So, X, like, causes, like, Omega to be frozen, and, like, Zero's like, well, don't care, that's my original body, and destroys it. This causes a giant explosion that knocks Zero out. As he lays unconscious, X tells Zero that he's out of power and will soon fade away, but he's confident that he can protect the world. And with that, X dies. He is now gone. We also find out that the Dark Elf's curse has been lifted. It's now the Mother Elf again, and it flies off. It's just like, yay, goodbye. Sure. And it's never seen again. Okay. So, despite all this, however, Dr. Vile is still in charge of New Arcadia, and he plans on getting his revenge on literally everyone, human or reploid. And that's Mega Man Zero Three. All right. <laughs> yeah. I, I At this point, I don't even have any thoughts, because it's just... So nonsensical. It is. It, it really, really is. It's it has chosen to fly completely off the rails here. And I, I, I think the good news is that Mega Man Zero Four is a little bit more sensible. Okay. So that's good. And I think a lot of it is because they just sort of at the end of Mega Man Zero Three just murder everybody, other than yeah. Zero, CL, and and Vile. Oh, uh, by the way, the 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 Guardians are dead. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, they die in the explosion. It's never explained, but they're they're dead. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate. I like them, but moving on, I guess. Uh, yeah. If, if it makes you feel better, they sort of come back later. That doesn't, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mega Man Zero Four. So we pick up sometime after Zero Three, with a human caravan trying to escape Neo Arcadia. So, they get attacked by Neo-Arcadian forces, but luckily for them, Zero and the Resistance happens to be following along in a caravan of their own, and they manage to fight out Files' forces. The leader of the caravan, a former reporter named Nage, thanks them, and then tells them to kindly piss off. So, let, right. me, let me pull up Nage here. You know, uh, human, short red hair, uh, once again, former reporter. Uh, she got to, like a weird mini gun camera. Yeah. That's how she performs her interviews with a gun camera. She points them at you. I see. And um, she and the rest of the humans are upset at the resistance for killing Copy X and letting 
vial seize power because as we learned the second vial seize, seizes power he begins to oppress everyone as opposed to just reploids so humanity is now like oh no i can't play video games all day and mm -hmm. now i have the pickaxe and so they're like she's like really upset it's like we our lives were perfect before this what do you mean reploids were suffering yeah who cares <laughs> it's gonna get very confusing for her very quickly uh, uh so she t does tell Zero that they plan on relocating to a place called Area Zero, which happens to contain an actual forest and is habitable to humans. This is because it's also the crash site of Eurasia. Remember that space colony from Mega Man X5? Yeah. So it turns out there was an environmental control system that survived, and over the hundreds of years, it just a forest sprang up around it. Now, okay. Yeah, yeah not the worst explanation. Yeah, I can I can work with that. Yeah. Now, Vial doesn't like the fact that people are leaving Neo Arcadia, so he comes up with an awesome plan. He's going to blow up every inhabitable place that isn't Neo Arcadia with a giant space laser. Sure. This, sure. this plan, called Operation Ragnarok, is being carried out by the, and I'm going to mispronounce this, the Energar 8 Warriors, a team of Reploids led by another Reploid named Kraft. Bring up okay. Good old Kraft. I really like how Kraft looks. Yeah, that's a good design. Yeah, Kraft is a green reploid. Like, he looks like an older man, has a scar. Like, he kind of has axle hair, except it's black. A giant mm. gun and a cool cloak. Like, he's, he's, he's a cool boy. I like him. Yeah. Very difficult to fight in the game, too. So, Kraft is a reploid who served under X and once fought to protect humans at all costs, particularly Nage, whom they actually had a relationship. Where, uh, they were boyfriend and mm. girlfriend. They were in love. Right. However, when Vial came into, into charge, he fell into despair because he thought the Age of Heroes was over. Like, caught the X's dead, Vial's in mm. charge, and the only way to survive was to follow him. Nage herself can't believe Kraft would ever act like this, believing he isn't the man she loved anymore. So, Zero manages to defeat the Eight Warriors and even fights off Kraft, all while protecting the human settlement as best he can. Despite this, it turns out this was just a delaying tactic from Dr. Vile. You use that time to complete the Ragnarok space laser. All hope seems lost, except Kraft has a change of heart. After talking with Nage and fighting Zero and all that, he's like, no, I need to fight back against him. I need to be a hero. Heroes do exist. He manages to get on board Ragnarok, and he tells everyone he plans on killing Vile with the Ragnarok laser. The plan, however, is a terrible one, because Vile lives in the only human city left. Right, I was going to say. So he plans on firing the laser at the headquarters of Neo Arcadia. Ciel realizes this would devastate the only real city left on Earth, and Zero infiltrates Ragnarok to stop him. I mean, it would also, you know, kill everyone. Yeah. I feel like there's a more surgical way to deal with this problem. Yeah. Well, you know, man has his plans, and... To his credit, he succeeds. He manages to fire the laser. Zero's not able oh. to stop him. And uh, he manages to lay laced and completely destroy New Arcadia, killing some 20 million people with Reploids in the process. Okay. So some people do survive, and the Resistance goes in and rescues them. Uh, Zero fights Kraft after this and manages to destroy him. As Kraft lays dying, he asks Zero why he would do this, why he would trust humans like Ciel and Nage who would let the world crumble and force them to fight. Zero tells him that he made a promise to a friend, someone who believed in harmony between replays and humans, and because of that, he trusts the humans he knows to do the right thing. Kraft is like, alright, that's good enough, and tells Zero to watch over an age for him, and then dies. So, it seems like game over, you know, Vile's dead, Kraft's dead, world's now far worse, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Except Ragnarok now all of a sudden starts accelerating towards Area Zero on a collision course. So okay. Zero manages to make his way to the control center. Where he finds a now absolutely broken and insane Dr. Vile. Which I'm going to bring up a picture of what he looks like right now. Look at that boy. Damn. Yeah. He, all right. He's a, he's a real Alucard from Hellsink sort of look going on there. Yeah. It's 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 pretty good. He's he also is very clearly half robot at least. Yep. So 
Zero is absolutely astonished by all this, and he asks how he's still alive, and Vile tells him he can't die. You see, Dr. Vile isn't human anymore. It turns out after the Elf Wars, Dr. Vile was sentenced to an eternity of suffering for his crimes. What? Okay, so when I said that Mega Man Zero Four was the more sense, like a more sensible one, I lied. <laughs> like Dr. That's Vile, I most learned to you into a, a sense of complacency. <laughs> That's the most absurd sentencing I've ever heard. It's really great because like X is the one who decides on this, if I remember correctly. What? Yeah, it's a very it un X like any move. Sense. <laughs> His body is replaced with a robotic one that constantly regenerates. And his memories were digitized so he could never forget his crimes. And then he was just set loose in the waste to forever live with his guilt. Wait. Did he feel guilty about it? No. No, he Wait. did not. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, X. X was like, okay, we're going to put you in an internally regenerating body and you're going to be effectively immortal. Now go live in the desert and think about what you did, old man. But he's not going to, though. No, he's not. He wanted to do those things. Say, Hitler, I feel like you did some bad things there. What if we put you into a robot body and you had to live in the Sahara? Like he's just going to be mad at you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, anyone can foresee that. Yeah. It's an especially bad plan. Also, why was X in charge of this decision? Well, you know, everyone just kind of trusted X. You know, he's like, you know, the great hero and whatnot. He ended both the Maverick Wars and the Elf Wars, you know. They're like, yeah, X, no, we, we trust you with whatever decision you make. Oh, you want to put, you want to, you want to put future Hitler in a eternally regenerating robot bot? Well, I mean, you fought Sigma all this time. And that seems like it's similar to that, but okay. No, we trust you, buddy. Yeah. So, if uh, you were facing somebody who's in a eternally regenerating body that could probably sur that could survive an impact with the with the planet, how would you go about uh, destroying him? Um. Well, I would probably encase him in some sort of like cement, mm -hmm. and then just drop him under the water and leave him there. That's a sensible plan. Zero's plan is to just damage Dr. Vile's core enough that eventually he'll just blow up and take Ragnarok with it. What? Yeah, it's clear they want to have a final fight and have him blow up at the end, but they sort of forgot about the part where he is a constantly regenerating body. So he fights him and manages to destroy his outer armor, and this causes an explosion that rips the like roof of the core off, and they're just outside in space as like it's descending through the atmosphere, and like a really awesome final fight music shows up. Like the final fight's actually really cool. Yeah. Uh like CL pleads with Zero to retreat as she won't be able to warp him out before too long. Zero simply tells CL to believe in him and defeats Vile. The explosion breaks apart Ragnarok, saving everyone, but Zero's nowhere to be found. CL is devastated by this, and a very sad ending sequence plays out over the credits as, like, CL's crying underneath a tree while shooting stars rain down from above. A very sad theme plays, but eventually she rises to her feet and thanks Zero for believing in them, and now it's their turn to prove his trust wasn't misplaced. And the final scene we see is of Zero's destroyed helmet in the wasteland. And that's Mega Man Zero. And with that, with X being dead, with Zero being dead... The last tenuous bits to the original Mega Man series are now gone. Almost like you could say in the series here. Almost like you could. Which is why um, one year later they're going to release Mega Man ZX. Alright. <laughs> so uh, before we move on, how do you feel about the Mega Man Zero series as a whole? After hearing um, all that. I think Zero One has some really interesting and really cool ideas for like a far future storyline. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think every other game in that series sounds like they wanted to make a video game and needed a threat for it. Yeah. And they just spitballed whatever they could into madness. Yeah. I, I think I pretty much agree with you on that because Zero Three 3 and Zero Four 4 are great games. Capital G, mm -hmm. great games as far as gameplay goes. Like, there's a lot of yeah. really cool ideas. The combat is very dynamic and you can do just some really nuts stuff. They yeah. just can't do it in any other Mega Man game. But yeah, then you, you experience the story, and you're like, 
Uh, wait, hold on. Like, no one's motivations make sense except for Zero, Vile, and sometimes CL. Yeah, pretty much. Everyone else is just, like, stupid. Mm -hmm. They're just stupid. Why would they do any of this? Craft going from I must always protect humanity to my, to I must always murder humanity on the drop of the hat. Yeah. My human girlfriend has opened my eyes that I must murder all humans. Mur murder all. It's 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 even more stupid than that. Cause it's like I want to protect humanity to well, everything sucks. So I might as well kill reploids to no, wait, I can be a hero. I need to murder everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh, it's... It is the Ugh. worst. It is the worst. Haha, -ha, behold my eternally regenerating robot body. Oh no, it's exploding. Hmm. Like, when you said eternal suffering, I thought the plan was to put him in, like, an eternally regenerating body and then dunk him in lava for eternity or something. Yeah, or, like, shoot him out in space, do, like, a car-style... Yeah. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure style like ending. But no, they were just like, uh, why don't you just walk around the wasteland in your cool huffer body? Yeah. There is like, no way I, he will ever get to a situation where he can like maybe build a lab or something. I would rather X have just killed him. Yeah. That would have been more interesting if X had finally just had to be like, no, I'm putting a bullet in you. Mm-hmm. And I'm moving on. And, like, that was, that was like, X's breaking point. Oh, damn. I just realized, yeah, that's the exact reason why he does this, right? Because he just can't bring himself to kill, kill a human. Yeah. Right. But, like, what what if he had? And that was, that was the moment X finally had to, like, walk away and go split himself in half or something. Yeah, that's, like, that's whatever. the moment that like, X broke. And he's like, all right, well, actually, maybe I'm kind of okay with killing and oppressing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that could have worked. That could have worked. A lot of things could have worked. I don't feel like this worked. No, I don't. It is it is a vehicle, like a lot of any Creates games, it's a vehicle mm. for some really great action. Yeah. And then you're like, hmm. Yeah, you really are like the makers of Galgun and other games like that, aren't you? It's story secondary. It's just, you, yeah, you're sure on 100% is. premise. Yep. Not saying that Galgun is a good premise. Like, I just <laughs> use that example because I just love the fact that they made the Galgun series. Yeah, I love that that series is a series and not just a single game. I love that they stretched it into like three. Oh god, yeah, they really did, didn't they? Because the, yeah, that's a game that needed to be well created to begin with, but then more than one following that. Like any creates is not a very horny company, and then they just decided to do no, that out of nowhere. And then, You're like, yeah. wait, hold on, what? Which I mean, okay, I can understand. You get one series in the in for the horny money. Yeah, sure. yeah, sure. Like I believe that that series sold well. Oh, I a hundred percent believe I that. I have no doubt. But uh, it is a little out of left field. Yeah, it kind of is. <sighs> With the end of the Mega Man Zero series, one would think that all the craziness would maybe be a little bit gone now and we'd come back to something a little like more towards normal but as we're gonna soon see with the Mega Man ZX series we really just haven't seen anything yet soon we're gonna be learning about what it really means to be a true Mega Man and when I say a true Mega Man I mean a true Mega Man but we're gonna go ahead and leave that for next time after all I think we have to just kind of maybe step back and digest a lot of the information that we got today Boy, was there a lot in Mega Man Zero. So for Alex, I'm Michael. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and sign off here today. And next time, we'll dive into the world of Mega Man ZX. Take a look at Mega Man Legends, and then maybe wrap up what exactly is going on with Kenji Inafune. If y'all like this sort of content, remember to take a look at ftp.podbean.com to take a look at other episodes of Falling Through Plot Holes, or check me out on www.twitch.tv slash one more time GFSN. But either way, see you all next week, everybody. Take care.